Welcome everybody to uh, this week's uh, Tech Friday. Uh, today, during our Tech Friday event, um, we're going to be talking about data um, and not just about data and how you store it, but how you use that data as well. But a little more on that when we get into the introduction. So my name is Nathan Vandenberg. I'm a Senior Director of Technology Transformation here at NTT. And I'm joined today by Michael Cooper um, from Dell Technologies. And Michael is a Senior Data Center Sales Executive um, looking after storage platforms and solutions in Australia. So as I mentioned, the topics for today we're going to focus on the data era and Michael will explain what the data is and what it means uh, for you in your business as well. We'll also touch on, um, as I mentioned, uh, Dell uh, and their new power store storage platform uh, and how that helps clients around modernization uh, of their on-premise infrastructures today and really simplifying uh, the way in which they're operating uh, those environments too. Um, then Michael will, will go into some detail really on automation, which I think is something that we've all spoken about over the years in terms of trying to achieve for our data centers, because we know uh, that removes, um, uh, I guess, what sometimes can be perceived as, as mundane work, but surely work um, that we would, you know, rather be automated for us. Um, automation also uh, can reduce errors. So the more that we're treating our infrastructure as code uh, and interacting with it in a programmatic way, uh, we're able to reduce the amount of error uh, in our systems uh, as well. Uh, and a more automated, less error prone system uh, is also a more secure system. So we think automation is very important when it comes to modernization of on-premise infrastructure. A little bit about uh, NTT. Um, uh, before we hand over to uh, Michael to talk about uh, um, Dell uh, and the PowerStore uh, platform. Um, so you, you'll know NTT um, as on-premise experts. Um, we've got an extensive partner ecosystem uh, which can help with not just storage, which we're focused on today, but everything uh, around that as well. Servers that host our applications, uh, the protection of data as well, uh, as an extension of storage, uh, virtualization, and importantly, uh, automation uh, that I mentioned up front. We're also, when we work with our clients in uh, the data center space, uh, there's rarely a single conversation today in the data center um, that doesn't uh, talk about uh, cloud in the same breath. So when we're looking to modernize, clients are also looking at how cloud forms part of that overall picture. And as a result, uh, NTT uh, has really worked with our partners across the cloud ecosystem, Microsoft, Google and AWS uh, to build our skills around, you know, assessing our clients' environments from an applications and data perspective and also uh, moving those uh, applications and workloads into uh, the cloud. But then importantly, helping our client optimize um, that hybrid ecosystem. So what we've observed during uh, the pandemic event is that there was a rapid uptake of cloud, but that might not have been optimized as well. So as we look to modernize, in some cases, we're bringing applications and data back. In other instances, we're making greater use of software as a service as well. So it's very dependent on your particular organization. Um, and as uh, outlined in this slide, we, we I guess, wrap all of this in, in what we call our journey to the cloud framework, which really helps us, um, uh, no matter where our clients are based, engage with them in a standard way. Finally, um, we are a Dell Technologies Titanium partner. Um, we have been a Titanium partner for many years uh, in the ANZ region. Uh, and so we're well versed um, in supporting uh, you in uh, architecting, designing, implementing and managing Dell technologies in your on-premise environment. With that, I'm going to hand over to Michael Cooper, who will take you through uh, the remainder of the discussion today. Thank you. 
Thanks very much, Nathan. It's an absolute pleasure uh, to be here with you today and, and NTT, who were a tremendous partner of Dell Technologies in Australia and for that matter, globally. Um, as discussed, I'm, I'm really excited here today to talk not just about hardware, but a little bit about the data era, you know, um, a little bit about Power Store, recapping on, on Dell's most successful platform that we've ever released and also give people a little bit of a demonstration around how we can automate uh, on-premise infrastructure to give, give our customers and partners cloud-like um, solutions. So if we look uh, at the first slide, I'm sure many of uh, the people watching this have, have seen a vendor presentation in the past where a number of bezels have been thrown on the screen and there's been lots of terms where we've talked about NVMe, we've talked about all flash, VVOL support, federation, um, and a whole heap of technical terms. I didn't want to bore people with more and more technical terms today and more pictures of bezels. What I did want to do though is pull the string a little bit on what is the data era. Now, you've probably all heard of explanations or definitions of the data era from, from many vendors and many partners. But I just wanted to give you a bit of a snippet of, of what my view of what the data era is, because Power Store as a platform has been designed for customers in this era. So the first example I love to give is, is Spotify. Most of us now either have a free or a paid subscription to Spotify where we stream music to one or many devices in our homes. When Spotify was first released, the company wanted to get live music to customers. It pretty much removed the requirement for any CDs or tapes for that matter in, in a person's house. What they didn't realize though, is as the years went on, the data they were storing could be used for a secondary line of income. What they found was they now had a global data repository of what type of music people were listening to and where, where they were listening to it. So what they found was that they were able to then contact bands and producers and actually say to them, next time you go on tour, we think these are the top five countries you need to go to based off the data that Spotify holds for our subscribers. So they've used the data in a way to generate additional income for their business. The second example, as you can see here, is recapture. Most of us have gone through this and either selected a traffic light or a, or a car in a picture in order to access a website in a secure manner. What we don't know though is recapture is actually digitizing a lot of things for the likes of Google and other companies. In fact, Google have digitized the whole of the New York Times as a result of the recapture algorithm. Again, a customer that's using a traditional way that consumers engage with them to then use the data that they generate from that and create a secondary line of income. So in my view, the data era is really utilizing the data that we as, as customers, as partners, as vendors all store for a different way. Now, if we look at what some of the industry analysts are saying, like Gartner, like Forrester, there's four key themes today in this new data era. Now, it's not new to anyone that data is growing exponentially. In fact, by 2025, we expect there to be over 175 zettabytes of storage in the global data sphere. But there's four key themes, like I said, that we're seeing. Firstly, we're seeing data generated no longer just in a data center, but it's hyper distributed. It's out in the edge sites. What we're also seeing is that there's only 0.5% of that data that's actually being used or analyzed by customers. But what we do know is that our customers have the expectation that 100% of their data and data processing is, is gonna go real time in the next five to 10 years. But importantly, what we're seeing as well is that the developers, the innovators of our customers and partners are spending way too much time, in fact, 56% of their time, keeping the lights on in their infrastructure. So these four key themes directly align to how we've designed PowerStore as our next generation platform. We've made PowerStore adaptable, data-centric and intelligent. And the intelligence is what I really wanna focus on today how we can automate and make our systems more intelligent to reduce that time that our developers are spending keeping the lights on. 
So where's all the data coming from? And here's just one snippet example from the utility sector. And this is the utility sector post COVID. We can see now in some mines, the actual miners have now got over 15 devices that are monitoring whether they be temperature sensors, heart rate sensors, uh, cameras attached to goggles or Bluetooth sensors on their watch. This is generating data and it's generating data for safety, productivity, and a whole heap of other reasons that the, the, the miners are generating this. Now, the, the, our customers are looking at different ways to process this, like I said, both in real time, but also in a historical manner, so they can start put together places and information to improve what they're doing as a business. So to summarize that, Data, data growth is huge. We all know that. It's growing phenomenally. It's going to go to 175 zettabytes very shortly. It's generated from everywhere, by everyone, and across lots of devices. We're getting huge hyper growth. Importantly, ICT teams are spending too much time keeping the lights on and managing their infrastructure. And this is still an issue. And finally, 99.5% of the data we're all storing is actually untapped. So Dell Technologies, in partnership with NTT, are working with our customers to try and tap into this data and try and automate and modernize the infrastructure that we're putting in place today. So if I give people a quick recap on PowerStore. PowerStore was released a little over a year ago. And like I said, it has been the single most successful platform Dell Technologies has released. We've shipped over 400 petabytes of capacity to 60 different countries around the globe. And in fact, out of all of the customers that are procured, 20% of them are brand new to our brand. They've chosen PowerStore because they love the vision and they love the design around the data era. If we look a little bit about the features like I mentioned, those four industry themes are driving or have driven the architecture of PowerStore, being data centric, intelligent and adaptable. If you look at the data centricity part, PowerStore supports any workload, whether that be file, block or vVols. It's performance optimised, so we've got multiple tiers of all flash, enabling customers to have storage class memory for hyper performing applications and standard SSDs for every other application. And we've got the industry leading efficiency through our four to one deep dupe and compression ratios. If you jump over to the adaptability, this is where our architecture really shines. We talk about the ability to scale out with different power store units, but also scale up so customers can add single drive increments as they scale in their business needs. This gives them the flexibility to grow when and to what size they need without being locked down to typical constraints like RAID. And flexible deployment and consumption really comes down to Dell Technologies working with partners like NTT and being able to deploy this product in either a full consumption, in a CapEx, in a payment plan, or as a completely managed service via NTT. No matter how our customer wants to consume it, we've got the solution. Now the intelligence is really key and we looked at this a little bit earlier. Way too many of our innovators and developers and our customers are spending time keeping the lights on. And this is where PowerStore really shines. Firstly, and I'll demo this today, we're able to program it through REST APIs and through Kubernetes and through lots of different ways to enable customers to automate what used to be traditional infrastructure and may now make it more cloud-like. Our appliances are also autonomous. We're able to not only notify the administrators to better load balance the performance, but also we've got our world-leading SaaS service called Cloud IQ, which gives customers cloud analytics and health analytics in order to proactively health check our systems. So if we pull the thread a little bit on the intelligence piece, which is what I want to talk about today. Like I said, I'm going to demonstrate how we can implement a storage as a service solution, leveraging REST APIs with a ServiceNow portal. 
our autonomy and proactive health analytics, like I said, is delivered through our SaaS service called Cloud IQ. And we've also got inbuilt machine learning. Our power stores are always learning about how customers are using them and proactively advising them how they can change to better their systems. So I'll now take a little bit of time to show you a demo of automation. Like I said, we're going to be using Ansible, Power Store in the back end, AWX as a workflow mechanism, and as a front end form, ServiceNow. If you look at the architecture, here's what we've got in place. I've got ServiceNow and a finance user using a form in the front end. They contact AWX and Ansible via a mid server over the REST API. That mid server then talks to PowerStore via APIs, but we've also got a quota management system that exposes quotas via API too. So PowerStore, Ansible, and that quota system integrate to deliver a service up through to ServiceNow as a complete storage as a service workflow. So we'll jump in now and have a quick look at this demonstration. You can see here now in AWX, we have our PowerStore workflow. If we click into that, we can see the workflow visualizer. We jump over now to the quotering system where we can see our quote is exposed. Finally, our host Gamora here, and we can see that it doesn't have any storage provisioned. Jump into service now, now and I can see the finance user and I jump into a storage provisioning task. I can see at the top, the array capacity has been exposed. The quote has been exposed. I can select a zone. I type in my name of my host here and the capacity I want being 21 gig and a new mount point. I can then select the least duration, permanent for production, but today we'll choose five minutes as it's a test. I'll hit my order now button in service now. Jump back into AWX. And the first thing we can see is the workflow starting. In a second, we'll see an approval request jump up to our AWX administrator. Administrator then goes in and clicks approve. Now we see our workflow begin and the provisioning tasks start. If we look into AWX, we can start to see things like SCSI drivers of the virtual machine being created, as well as the multi-pathing. We are also updating the quotering through the API in this instance. Finally, we then create the file system and the volume for the host to then mount in PowerStore. You can see here it's taken less than two minutes to perform this task. We jump into PowerStore and refresh the host group and see that Gamora is now there. I then jump into map volumes and we can see that 21 gig volume being provisioned. I go in and refresh my quotering system and I can see the finance user's quote has been reduced and an email has been sent to that finance user saying the storage provisioning is complete. I then update my host and I can see my new mount point and the new paths using multi-pathing to that mount point. I create a new file on that mount point and list it out here. Now, as you can see, you remember that there was a five minute creation for this. There's now a deprovisioning task that's kicked off. We screen forward for time and we can see that deprovisioning workflow start. Now you can see the workflow starting, which is doing everything in reverse. It's removing the multi-pathing, removing the storage LUNs, updating our quotering system. We see in the inbox that the deprovisioning is complete for the user. And finally, we can see in PowerStore that the host group has been removed. Last but not least, the quote is updated. That's just a quick demo for everyone to show you the power of being able to automate what was a traditional infrastructure, now with PowerStore being the next generation product built for this new data era. Thanks very much for my time to present today, Nathan. Back to you. Thanks, Michael. Um, fantastic presentation as always. Um, it's always fun uh, to learn more about people. Uh, the fact that you're a Taylor Swift fan and uh, also that, that demo demonstrating your Guardians of the Galaxy fan. So. Uh, good to get a little bit more personal insights as well. Uh, but seriously, um, you know, a fantastic presentation that really highlighted some of the things that we spoke about upfront. Uh, namely, uh, we're living in that data era. 
Um, it's no longer sufficient to just store that data, but really our businesses are demanding that we turn that data really into actionable insights and preferably in real time. So we need to be thinking about how we're going to achieve that and what sorts of technologies we're going to need um, in our uh, data center environments uh, to achieve that. I think the other thing that stood out for me is that we've been talking to our clients for many years about the tenants or attributes um, of technologies that they should be uh, looking for uh, when they're looking to refresh, renew um, their environments. And one of the ones that we've said early on was uh, the ability to address technology via APIs um, so that they can be extensible, they can be extracted into that software uh, layer and considered a programmable asset. And I think for anybody that's tried to undertake an automation project, um, they've probably in the past found that difficult, um, costly, uh, maybe needed additional proprietary software. And so I think the other thing uh, that Michael's demonstrated is that um, I think we're moving into a more open um, and interconnected world. So not only APIs, but also uh, the use of platforms like Ansible um, and AWX to do those workflows uh, as well. And there's a lot of uh, predefined uh, playbooks uh, now that's available to really accelerate um, uh, those projects, those automation projects. So if you haven't looked at that, I'd strongly encourage you uh, to do so. Um, so look, with that, um, I just wanted to jump into um, next steps. And really, first and foremost, if you're interested, you're interested in anything with respect to PowerStore, um, please do reach out to NTT uh, and to Dell um, and make that connection. And we'd be happy uh, to do a demonstration uh, for you uh, or to workshop any other aspects of your environment. Um, NTT has a, a standard uh, hybrid IT architecture workshop so that we can understand where you are today and also where you want to be in the future uh, and how do you achieve that best balance between on-prem uh, and the cloud as well. I think I mentioned up front that uh, storage, as, as I'm sure you all know, doesn't exist uh, on an island. And so thinking about some of those other technologies uh, that wrap around are really important. Uh, data protection being um, front of mind there as well. And uh, Dell Technologies has a fantastic complementary uh, data protection uh, suite uh, of offers as well uh, in that space. Also, I think it's really important that we think about um, uh, disaster recovery and business continuity in these hybrid environments as well. So that's something that we often pick up with clients when we're talking about um, uh, hybrid IT architectures. Um, the other thing I would say is that um, uh, the data center as well, just like storage doesn't exist uh, on an island, our data centers don't either. And I think the thing that, that Michael, uh, you know, emphasized is that we're seeing data being generated everywhere. Um, we're seeing, uh, I think, the rise of, of the edge. So this swing from, you know, mass centralization that we've been on to perhaps, you know, more decentralization as we see data uh, being created on the edge. and needing to be processed on the edge as well. You know, the, the just uh, speed of light will, will prevent sort of that achieving real time um, or near real time analytics uh, if we're having to send data back to centralized um, data centers and clouds uh, every time that we need to uh, run analytics. So really thinking about um, how that impacts your network, um, how you're looking at um, uh, new technologies and how you're going to take advantage of those uh, like uh, 5G, uh, Wi-Fi 6 uh, out on the edge as well. Uh, and NTT is uh, a 30-year 30, 30 uh, system integrator founded around networks. So we have a lot of strength that we can bring uh, to the table in that space. Equally, I think security becomes challenging when we think about these distributed uh, and hybrid environments. How do you replicate security policies that you have on premise and, and translate to those to the cloud. And that's one aspect, but also um, how do you look at other elements of security, like taking out the human element, uh, making sure things uh, are codified uh, in an infrastructure as code type arrangement, um, making sure that we're removing um, manual uh, processes and applying automation. And I think Michael's presentation demonstrated 
um, how uh, Power Store can help you uh, achieve that as well. So uh, I think the security aspects are, are, are vital that you look at that um, when you're thinking about um, your hybrid IT environment. Um, I'd say the other thing um, is, you know, talk to NTT and Dell. Uh, we're really aligned um, uh, and have experience from operating in particular verticals as well. Um, NTT um, has um, a large number of salespeople that have experience for, for a tremendous number of years in government, um, healthcare, um, higher education, uh, mining and utilities. And so we can bring um, specific knowledge from these industries um, and uh, to, to your business as well, benefit from what we're seeing other clients in your industries apply challenges uh, that they're needing to overcome. So with that, um, I'd like to say uh, a big thank you uh, to Michael uh, for taking the time um, to prepare the presentation and to, to present today to all of you. So thank you, uh, Michael, and to the broader Dell team. Um, I'd also like to thank you for taking the time out, um, regardless of whether that's morning, uh, afternoon or in the middle of the night to listen to this. Hopefully you found it valuable uh, and please do uh, reach out to us. Um, if, you, um, if you'd like to contact us, please contact us at au.info at global.ntt. That's au.info at global.ntt. And if you'd like to receive more information on Tech Fridays, uh, please subscribe to our YouTube channel now. So thank you once again for watching and goodbye.